Hey guys, it's SJ86LukeXX here, and today we're going to be going over making a game in UDK, wherever that's gone. <clears throat> Here it is. We're going to be going over making a game in UDK, and this is going over everything in Scratch, and this is part one, and this is um, pre production, you know, you know what you want to get out of your game. So, first thing. What do you want to make? Do you have like an idea in your head of what you're going to do? You're going to make like the next Need for Speed or Mario Brothers. Uh, you know, you need to know what you want. You need to make a visual image of it in your head to be able to move on to the next step. Do you have a storyline? Has your, you know, has your story got a, like a back, like a, is it a long backstory or is it just like Mario Kart where it's just bunch of random races thrown in or you know has it got a full on storyline like maybe Splinter Cell Splinter Cell's got quite a long storyline and the good thing about storylines is it allows you to either make a prequel or a sequel to your game depending if you want to do you know what genre the game will be is your game going to be an action game is it going to be a first person shooter is it a horror game is it a puzzle game that this is probably one of the most important things because then you know what to build up on if it's a first person shooter you don't really have to spend a lot of time developing the character that you're gonna play as unless of course it's in third person But who is it for? another very key fact in game development uh, there's no point in making a horror game for a bunch of kids and there's no point in making a SpongeBob SquarePants puzzle slider game for a bunch of adults. So you need to make sure that in your game the age range is consistent and otherwise you know it just gets boring. Are you working in a team? If you've got a team of people making a game is a breeze. It's a lot easier. You know, you can you can be dramatic, you can be outrageous in what you do. If you're working alone, like I do in my games, it's a lot more struggling, but you get a higher sense of achievement when you complete it. When you know when you make something on your own without any help. So um, that's that one. You know, are you working in a team? Just kind of helps. If you're not, maybe get a team together. Miscellaneous stuff. By this, I mean, do you know what kind of items you're going to have in your level? Like, what guns are you going to have? Are you even going to have guns? Is it a weapon game? You know, um, is your game going to have special pickups? Or, like, Nazi zombies, is it going to have an awesome story to it? Or, you know, just random things that you need to think about before you can actually get on to making your game. Um, that's the end of that. When I, whenever I make my games, um, at the start of my level, oops, shit, I always try to come up with what I want to do before I start making it. And I'll just show you it here. Um, you can all my cadet stuff. Right. <sighs> Where is that? Level contents check. Level 3. Now for this, look, it really is just a brief description of what you want to have so you don't forget so for um, level 3 of my game uh, mine's literally my level is just called level 3 whereas you might want to put level 3 and then name and then call it right, whatever obviously mine's not like that so I'm not going to have that um, I've got a time limit on my game you might want to write that have you got a time limit or not one of the key elements of making a game though is that time limits and having an element of time like something to race against usually does grab people's attention more than a game where there is literally no no challenge people will just pick it up they'll start playing it they'll get bored five minutes later you know you, they'll never go on your game again um that was just a that would be a miscellaneous fact of a game. You know, it's just something random that you want to put in. Um, that is the that would be my main 
the me that's the heart of the game. That's what it's actually about. Is uh, collecting objects and running them back, trying to get them back to spawn. Uh, repetition. Um, no, I don't necessarily agree with um, this, but apparently, repetition. Uh, also, also like time limits make games seem more um, enjoyable. It's like I think Jewel Quest was using as an example. There's like 30 seconds to get as many rows of jewels or whatever as you can, and it's repetition. People want to do it again and again and again, and they get used to it, so they can do it better, and they want to stick at it to get better and better and better. And you know, you end up with people staying on it for hours on end. Fast pace, miscellaneous rewards. Um, if your player is just doing the same thing over and over and over again with the same boring things, they won't want to play. Whereas if you're giving them rewards and boosts and things, they're going to want to keep playing to see what more they can get. So it's just things to keep the players entertained and keep them playing your game. Now, um, as I've already said, the game engine we are going to be using is UDK and let me just see what my on uh, six minutes I'll start now um, so yeah if you don't know where to download UDK you can get it from www.udk.com and if you look as soon as the page loads you'll have all these like buttons at the top the one on the far right hand side does say download UDK you're better off just clicking on that one rather than clicking on the download the and then whatever build it is at the bottom because that takes you to a different page. So click on download UDK and then it says download blah 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 download latest release and then just click the one that's there and it'll tell you how big it is etc. Like that. Also um, you need to look at the minimum requirements as well for this because there's no point in you even trying to make a game if your processor works about one gigahertz and you've got a couple of megabytes of RAM because you just won't be able to make anything apart from a box and boxes aren't very fun unless you're a kid but anyway download that install it and then carry on with this tutorial okay so the next thing we're going to do is we've got our empty world here so we're going to click on tools, new terrain, and we'll make this about 30 by 30. And just skip the next two things, just keep clicking next. Right, now we've got our blank terrain. There's nothing here, it's just boring at the moment. Um, if you go into game view, look, you'll see it's all just black. You haven't got any lighting in or anything at all. So first thing we're going to do is select a point in about the middle of the terrain, right click, add actor, and add player start. Now if you if your player starts in a good position you'll see it like it is on mine. Oh. However yours might spawn a little low down and it might look like this. Wait. No, it's not saying it. Um, you might get like a little box with a cross in the middle of it. If you get that, then just lift, lift it up a bit, and you'll get that kind of thing with path nodes as well. Uh, this green line here that's leading to the terrain icon, just ignore that. All that means is that the player start has based itself on the terrain layer, which means if the terrain moves, the player start moves with it. Which doesn't generally work but it's supposed to. Um, next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a light. So you're going to right click, add actor, add light, dominant directional light, and that is kind of like the sun of the world. So you might just want to drag that high. Um, there isn't really a big difference from the unlit, I mean lit and unlit when you have put a dominant light in because it just seems to do a similar effect. But you will notice a difference when you um, add buildings and things to your game. So now that we've got that, I'm going to rebuild the lighting. I'm going to uncheck use light mass because I just don't really like using it yet. 
set the build quality to preview and just click OK. It should literally take a second. And once you've done that, uh, go back to the top toolbar, go to the far right and you'll see a little green arrow. If you hover over it, it'll say play this level in edit in an editor window. Click on that and you will load the play in editor mode. Oops. And here we go, we've got a player. Your player will look different to mine because I'm using a um, custom game mode. And by the way, if you're a bit more experienced with UDK and um, you want to know how to use a custom game mode, just look on my other tutorials and I'll put it in. But anyway, now we're here, we've got a player, we can move around, we can jump, we can crouch. Um, there's not really more to it at the moment. So I'm going to press escape and leave that. And we're going to start making our world. So over here in the modes window, go down and click on this little mountain kind of icon. It says terrain editing mode and click on that. Now click on this little paintbrush kind of one. It says paint. Now UDK in its terrain uses height maps <clears throat> and the bottom layer is um well the bottom layer whenever you have that selected in the paint mode what happens is if you hold down control and left click I'm going to go into unlit mode for this no wireframe mode um put the radius up hold down control and left click you'll notice that the ground starts to rise and that is because it's just make well you know it's how you add mountains but if you had a material layer over that and you right uh, if you hit control and left clicks you'd start to actually paint that material on it but don't worry about that we'll go in we'll go into that a bit later right i'm now going to show you how to use the flatten tool so for some games you might want to make like a bowl kind of arena and once you've got the kind of height you want from one little bit what you can do is, if you make the area thick enough, thick enough, you can then select this flatten tool, hold control and left click, and then just kind of drag your mouse along, and it'll raise all the terrain up to that layer, uh, that height, sorry, and you can really easily make like a cliff. I guess it's good for making cliffs. Uh -huh. Nearly there. Okay, I'm just going to build this all the way around this map here. So I'm going to make like a little dome. Because if we have a dome, it'll come in handy later on when we start adding enemies and things to our levels. Do, 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 do. Right, now I'm going to switch back into lit mode, and as you can see, look, we've got a um, little dome, and we've got little cliffs here. Now, you could also use the smooth tool here, and you could make a hill. If you hold down control again and left click, you can smooth out one of the sides and turn it into like a bit of a hill that you can go up onto. So I don't, you know that could come in handy for you later on, or if you want to smooth out the edges of this. But I'm not going to do that anyway. Um, right now we're going to add some materials to our terrain. So open up the content browser. Wait, first. No, no. Leave the terrain edit open. Then click on this little um, icon here next to the Kismet icon, and open it up. Put on a full screen. Uh, make sure you've got all assets ticked. So if it's not, you just click it. It's just here. If you look on my screen, um, tick materials down here in the object type, and then in the search bar, type in dirt, and get this material here, the M U N Terrain Dirt 04. Then, with that selected, minimize the content browser and then with the terrain edit open underneath where it says height map 
right click new terrain setup layer from material auto create click on that you've got to wait it'll always say unresponding first you've just got to wait for it there you go and now you have got a material on your terrain now if you're using your own material and it's really low definition um, what you can do is in the terrain edit tool where it says tessellation where if you look, look at the where all the tools are go underneath that to the import export then go along again to brush then along once more to tessellation My bad. and click increase it increases the definition of the material but don't do it too much because otherwise it looks awful so I'm going to take mine back to what it was because that looks good okay there we go um, so now once again rebuild lighting untick use light mask click OK play it in editor and we have got a basic map and you know um, now depending on what game mode you want to do you could start adding things into this and you'd start visually scripting it from there but we're not going to do that yet <coughs> so that's going to be the this is going to be my first tutorial then on adding terrain um, I hope you learnt something if not well, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so, yeah, go ahead, s click the little save icon, save current level, type in whatever you want to call it. I'm going to call mine. No, I'm going to put it in mine. Call it, call it demo. And save it. Okay, now you can, uh, you can either close UDK, crack on with this, or you can have a look at some other tutorials if you need to. Thanks, hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Goodbye.